All right, day three behind bars. Got some more goodies. Uh, we ended up getting the chrome switch caps, the Kahuna Collection non-heated grips, and the chrome switch housings. So I didn't care about heated grips because if it's that cold out that I need heated grips, I might as well ride the street glide. Also it doesn't have heated grips, wired for it, but that's the fairing and gloves is really all I need. Keeps the hands plenty warm. So we're going to go ahead and get our clamshells swapped out. Here's a couple of screws that hold it together. One up top, one underneath. And I believe there's a couple of screws just inside the clamshell. So I can actually make the chrome swap. And the switches, it's a, they kind of pull apart on the sides and just pop off a couple of nubbins. I'll try to grab a, a quick snippet of that. Uh, maybe do one switch live and then wash, rinse, and repeat on the others. And then uh, grips will be the last thing. And with any luck, my the correct risers will be here on Monday. So tomorrow probably, because I don't think I've got it in me today. Run the clutch cable, yeah, because my brake line won't be here until about Thursday. So in theory, come Monday, Swap out my risers, take the bars, plop them on, and like 90% done. So fingers crossed, but let's get cracking at this because we're burning daylight. All right, so I figured I'd check back in real quick. There were, in fact, two little screws on the inside, if that'll focus, that are T15s. They screwed in right here and right here. You remove that bracket. Got the little switch back here. You gotta pop that through. Had to take the cap off my cruise control, which is just a tiny little cotter pin, so don't lose that thing. And then it just kind of lifts up and out. So I was gonna go ahead and throw the chrome housing on, even actually had it positioned, and decided, you know what? These buttons here have a little hole there and a hole up top. And it'll be the same thing on the sides. So you just spread the switch and then pull it off the nubbins. So rather than trying to, to do that and hold the camera, you just kind of have to take my word for it. Just a little flathead, pry that out gently on one side, and then it should lift off the other. So just wanted to let you guys know I discovered a couple of screws that I wasn't sure on. So, All right, so clamshells are on. They look good. I mean, don't never mind the spacing. I still got to get grips on and all that. Uh, but pay close attention to how your switches come off and the orientation of how the clamshell is because I made the mistake not paying attention. I accidentally put this one on upside down. But, you know, through a little bit of effort and a couple of square words, got that swapped out. So now I'm going to grab the kahunas here. I'm gonna get those slid on. So the trick to these, because these are the Harley ones, here's your throttle side. You did down inside the tube, not you're gonna see it, the little teeth that grab onto this. So you don't want this in there too tight or too loose, because too loose, you're gonna strip these teeth. If it's too tight, you're not gonna get that snap back like you want. So I'm gonna to have to loosen the clamshell, probably take the whole top off. And there's a little lip right here that sits inside the groove, and that's what keeps them from sliding off. Now Left side, same concept, only with the with these ones, there's a little notch just inside on the you know, on the inside of the clamshell, and it matches up with a little notch. Here, we'll just try to go. There you go. Little notch on the grip that keeps these from twisting while you're riding, so there's no need to glue, unlike the Kuriakins that were on there. So I'm gonna loosen up the clamps. I'm gonna get the grips on there. They'll kind of help me give a visual of. You know where everything's gonna land shy of still getting my uh, perches on so let's cross our fingers and hope that this continues smoothly although I probably just jinked myself all right hold on all right I think we're gonna call that a day the grips are on we got a decent amount of play obviously this is all temporary because still got to get the perches on got to get them on the bike but uh, you know we'll see you know, how much gap I end up with after I get the the uh, clutch on there so 
but all in all, I mean, I think it looks good. You know, I think everything is kind of locked together. I got a little bit of play if I really, oh no, that cleaned up. I had a little bit of play here with the switch I was in, but that must have locked up. So I'm really digging this Chrome switch from, from Black. I mean, the switches feel nice. Everything is all clicky the way it should be. You know, now trick is, you know, when I get it back on the bike, plug everything in, is everything going to work the way it's supposed to? So one way to find out, and hopefully that day will be Monday or this weekend if I happen to get my brother over here and have a you know, couple of six beers and see if we feel adventurous. So until next time. All right, so we're still trucking along. I took yesterday off. Today, still don't have a riser, but the brake line came in, so yay for that. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to pull my clutch cable out and get a length on it because I ordered a plus six overstock braided line, braided, braided cable, that by all rights should work for the new bars. But just kind of loosely kind of hanging it up and tracking it doesn't seem to be all that longer, all that much longer. I mean, I suppose I could probably free up some length if I didn't chase through the middle, but I kind of like the look. Plus it works like cable management. So I'm gonna go ahead and fish that down all the way. There's one or two little brackets that it's just little plastic uh, loops that crimp together. You just pop those open cut it loose or not cut it loose you know lay it out of the bracket chase it down and around to under here i'm going to crack loose these allen heads and i pro i might have some fluid loss i don't know we're going to find out if i do i'll let you know if i don't i'll let you know but either way i've got a container to, to catch any fluid and once that cable's off i'm going to lay it out measure it and then i'll measure the new one and See if I ordered the right one, or if maybe they sent the wrong one, or if we're good to go. I, I have no idea, so uh, I'm going to get cracking on that. We'll see what happens, and I'll fill you in. Uh, all right, we're several days later, and I'm frustrated. I ordered some parts for the first time from a small shop down in Texas. Um, through some of their fault, I feel, and some of mine, my clutch cable is wrong. It was advertised as a plus six, and I took that to mean, okay, well, six inches over stock. Not a problem. My fault being, didn't actually measure the clutch cable, just kind of assumed. Again, assuming, my fault. If I had read a little bit lower, it would have said overall length, 70 inches. Well, in my little pea brain, that would have meant my stock cable would be six inches less than 70. So 64, 66, I don't know. Um, so, and then I received the cable, so yay for that. But I didn't have the brake line, even though the brake line was ordered at the same time, it was showing as in stock on their websites. Shit happens. So I call them up. I talked to one person who's not personable whatsoever. Said, okay, well, what's going on? He goes, oh, well, it shows in stock, but it's not actually in stock. We're waiting to get more made. Uh, we're about three to six weeks out. So hang up the phone. Call back, get somebody else. Zero personality, a little frustrated. Just cancel the order, cancel the, the brake line. I've got the clutch, whatever. So we'll see in seven to 10 days, I might get a refund. I should get a refund. God, I hope I get a refund. I'm not gonna name the shop because that just kind of seems like a dick move. But if you're searching for bars, clutch cables, hydraulic lines, whatever, I would stay away personally. I, I wouldn't order from this company again. They're out of a company in Texas, like I said, just west of Austin. Just a small town, uh, I think it's called like Spicewood or something. Uh, I guess in that part of the country, they're known for hills. Take that as you wish. Uh, so, eh, scratch that, ordered, measured actually, 
and ordered a new clutch cable, upper clutch cable, and a new brake line from Dennis Kirk. Dennis Kirk so far has blown me out of the water. I got my had my brake line in two days. My clutch cable should be here by Thursday, the latest. Today's Monday. Uh, called them up because I didn't have the crush washers that were supposed to be included. And they said, oh, so sorry, our bad. Uh, I, we'll give you a $10 credit on your account. But that's great. You know, I'm sure I'll order something from, from Dennis Kirk here in the future. Sucks I don't have the crush washers, but uh, I went out to the local cycle gear, picked up a couple of washers, and we're ready to, to get back on track, hopefully. Um, also got the new risers from Harley. I'm really hoping they're going to work because the current risers, each one's about two and an eighth wide. These new ones are inch and a quarter, I believe. Something like that. Uh, maybe inch and a half tops, but yeah, I think it's inch and a half. So with those on there, that, that, that should be what we need to actually get bars on bike. Bars on bike, finally, progress of getting get them off the vice, get them on the bike, and depending on how froggy I feel today, I might go ahead and actually start hooking up the brake line since I have that. But uh, we'll see how the day takes us. So let's uh, get set up and we'll kind of show you what I got. All right, here we are. The new riser, the distance over. So we're only talking inch and a half here. Get a profile view. It's the same shape as the stalkers, but a lot narrower. And then our new top clamp. Harley provides all new hardware to mount the risers. Uh, I didn't go with any new bushings because it's a five-year-old bike and at the end of the day, it's got 5,200 miles on it. I'm pretty damn sure those bushings are still gonna be good. If they're not, I'll kick myself and I'll let you guys all know so you can virtually kick me too. But uh, we're gonna get those risers off, get these risers on, and then hopefully drop these bad boys on that bad boy. So let's see how this goes. Hold up. Something has finally gone my way. All right, we have bars on bike. So we gotta, Front view. Yeah, did put the seat on there just so I can kind of dial everything in. POV. So, not bad, not bad. I think it puts my hands ever so slightly above my shoulders, but you know, I think I'll be all right. You know, still plenty of adjustability. Dropped in there perfectly, plenty of room. I like it. So, and then we'll jump around over to that wiring real quick. See if Fat Kick can get in here with the camera. So on the top of this block here, this wire with the three plugs is your right side. So you got your blinkers back here and then two other plugs. I don't know exactly what they're for, but they're there. On the underside is your left side, again with blinkers in the rear, other plug in the front. So, and if you get them backwards like I did the first go around, uh, all that happened for me was my blinkers we're slightly illuminated, but mostly dim. And you got that connector right there. It's the only one that fits, pretty obvious. I went ahead and popped that Christmas tree loose just to free up a little bit of room. I don't know that I need it, but I'd rather have it and be on the safe side. So we're gonna button this up, get it all shoved back in. And I don't think we're gonna do the brake line today, but uh, it's coming along. We're finally pro positive progress and I'm beyond stoked to finally have bars on bike. So tomorrow, next day, whichever it is, we'll get the hydraulic line on, then we got a clutch cable, got a new seat for the bike, but we're gonna hold off on that at the moment. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and do a three hole, three hole change because when I pulled that transmission side cover, it is a wet clutch, unlike my Street Glide, so I lost fluid, not a big deal. Since I gotta do an oil change anyway, now I have to at least refill, if not replace. Uh, my transmission fluid, I might as well go ahead and just do a full three hole change. So I picked up everything I needed over at, uh, you know, the dealership since I was there. So I don't think we're going to do a video on that. There's plenty of other ones out there for three hole changes on soft tails, they all 18 and up. Um, and I just really don't want to try to hold the camera and be fat and be on the floor. So, uh, yeah, Steve over at Sigbaggers, I think he does a, a good job on the, uh, the oil change. 
three hole change, but there's a ton of videos out there. But uh, yeah, cables, lines, and she, three hole change, she's rideable. Hopefully no more issues. So we'll check back. So it occurs to me, maybe I should have paid closer attention in math class back in high school because apparently I can't add or motorcycle math is vastly different than any other math I've ever done. So the brake line's too short, about two inches from connecting, which means I would want an extra inch or two for play. So contact Dennis Kirk, sent them the old one, got a new one coming. They're super great to work with. We'll absolutely buy from them any and every time in the future. But in the meantime, our new clutch cable arrived a day early, also from Dennis Kirk. So huh, maybe we keep trucking along. Now we still got the braided stainless. This one's from Magnum. It's, I believe, a 42 inch, so I think that's a plus 10. How it works out to plus 10, I don't know. When the bars are only six inches taller than they were, and the plus six cables were all, well, way too short, I guess increasing by six inches or, yeah, six inches on bar height equates to 10 inches in cable length. I, I don't know. It's got to be that Chinese algebra kicking in. So I've already got the upper clutch cable removed because that's the only part that I got was the upper. The lower is mostly hidden under the bike, so I don't care if the bottom is braided. So uh, we've already got it disconnected. We're just going to run up and in, and hopefully it works. It was actually pretty simple to remove. You slide this cover up, and there's a little view window at the bottom. So you remove the little red plug from the yellow housing or just slide it out. Uh, that releases the tension on your clutch cable. And using that view window and a little flat head or, a, or a, like one of those dentist's hooks, uh, you compress the spring with one hand, fish the little ball and wire out, release the spring, and now you're separated. How I'm going to take the yellow mechanism off of the upper cable to put onto the new upper, I don't know yet, but when I figure that out, I'll get back on, fill you in on what I figured out, and really hope this works because I'm one brake line and one cable line, uh, cable clutch short of being done. So fingers crossed, all the fingers, all the toes, anything that's crossable is crossed that this cable works. and. Their ETA on the new brake line is going to be Wednesday, I believe, or Tuesday. Either way, today's Wednesday. I'm really hoping that maybe I get exceedingly lucky and I get it on Friday. More likely Monday. Hopefully it just shows up before I take off on vacation on Tuesday. So we'll see what happens. Hold up. All right, so that was easy enough. Um, I actually had to take the yellow tube and separate it and put it back on the lower half. But there's the upper half here with a little red dot that stays there. So then I take the black plastic tube, it's ever so slightly glued to the rubber cap here, and I bring that over and put it over here. And it had a rubber cap on the new cable, so I just slid that on over the top. Now I gotta take the little ball set up on the lower cable, fish it into there, then I'll make my adjustments with this, and when I'm done, slide this down over the top. And we should finally have a functional clutch. So I'm gonna get to going on that. I'll let you know how, how easy or difficult it was once I'm done. All right, so that was exceedingly easy. Exceedingly easy. There we go. Uh, the hardest part was just kind of pulling the, the lower clutch cable and ball forward so I could drop the quick connect from the new cable down low enough to the ball would drop into place, lock in, and then it was just coming up and setting the tension. So that way I end up with 1 16th to 1 8th inch play, free play, right there. Ran it down. There's a little bit of clear heat shrink on there. So got that because I'm obviously I'm going to rub on my bars and my uh, inner uh, nacelle, I guess. 
down to here. Everything's all tight and tightened up the locking nut. Uh, the only complaint I have, and it's not even with uh, Dennis Kirk, it's with the manufacturer of Magnum, is they put a little paper sticker right there telling you to remove that sticker before heat shrinking. Well, the problem is it's a paper sticker, so it falls apart. So I don't think I'm going to worry about throwing any goof off to get the sticky stuff off. It'll eventually come off with various washes, but I am thrilled to finally have a victory because uh, I, I needed one. I was getting very frustrated. So we are now just waiting on a brake line. And with any luck, that's going to drop right in. We'll, uh, my buddy's going to come over, help me purge the brakes and a brake forward. I'll do the rear later, but uh, get that filled and purged and it should be ready for a shakedown run. So pretty, pretty pumped. So uh, it'll be a couple of days before I'm back, and with any luck, that'll be our final victory, and I'll get out on that shakedown run, check back with you guys, and let you know what tweaks that I made. So, see you in a couple days. All right, last parts here showed up today. It's our new brake line, the new, new brake line. So that one, I've opened it, I've looked at it, I haven't even compared it to the bike yet, but it should work because the old one was about two inches shy. You know, but this one is now four inches longer than the old one, so there shouldn't be any issues. So we're gonna get that installed. We're gonna get the uh, front brake bled and get the tank on because she's about ready for a shakedown. So I'm gonna get to wrenching on that brake line Shouldn't be too hard. We already got the the top part off. So we just gotta remove the bottom part. Gonna have a towel on hand just in case there's any fluid spillage because I don't want to get anything on the paint because brake fluid is corrosive, apparently. So I don't want to screw up my paint. So let's get at it and I will get back to you once it's all done. All right, shakedown done. She rides great. Definitely some things I gotta get used to. Bike handles, so different. Uh, but it's it's comfortable. And my hands, like I said, I'm, I'm 5'9". I got a 28 inch inseam on a good day. Uh, they're 16 inch. They're true 16, so base of bars to grips is 16. Uh, base of bars to point is 18. So that being said, I my hands do land about an inch to an inch and a half over my shoulders, but I think we're gonna be all right because this isn't meant to be a long haul tour. It's meant to be my bar hopper, my around town bobber. I think it's gonna be great. Uh, gotta tighten up a couple of other things that I discovered that were loose, such as mirror stems. Uh, and maybe fiddle with the clutch a little bit because um, I'm almost all the way out releasing before it's grabbing. So I'm gonna tweak that a little bit. Little things that you don't know you need to do until you actually get out there and ride. But uh, it's going to take some getting used to, but I'm, I'm loving it. I'm digging it. It looks mean, even with the, the goofy windshield. Now the chrome looks great. You know, just, you know, it's, it's, it's sick. I, I'm digging it. I'm glad I didn't wait till next year like I was originally planning. But you know what? This, uh, this closes out the... Big changes for the fat boy, as far as I know, as far as I'm considered, or as far as concerned, the fat boy's done. Shy of, you know, fluid changes and whatnot, but uh, it's good to go. Now, I, I love it. We're going to leave it alone. So, we'll see what the next project is. So, until then, y'all take care. We'll catch you next time.